Good evening to one and all. A warm welcome to 53rd International Workshop on Life Lessons from Betron Brussel, Golden Jubilee of Nehu, May 2022 to May 2023. International Workshop Series, a series of 100 programs every Saturday, 5 to 7 p.m. Look up, aim high, nation first, self next. Jointly organized by Internal Quality Assurance Cell, IQAC, Northeastern Hill University, Shillong Meghalaya, and Indian Society for Training and Development, ISTD, Shillong Chapter, Meghalaya, in collaboration with Department of Philosophy and IQAC, Moran College affiliated to Dibrugar University, Moranhat Assam, and Department of Philosophy, Sri Venkateshwara University, Tirupati, Andhra Pradesh. A warm welcome to today's keynote speaker, guru, and collaborator, Professor P. Chinnaya, sir, Professor Prabhasankar Sukla, sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor Nehu, Shillong, and the Honorable Vice Chancellor Raja Redisa, Sri Venkateshwara University, Tirupati. Professor Mithali Kovarman, Principal Moran College, Dr. Rajendra Prasad Bhattapur Sir, Coordinator IQAC Moran College, and Dr. Sutasini Gugai Madam, Workshop Coordinator, Moran College, and Head Department of Philosophy, Professor B.S. Mipun Sir, Chairman ISTD, Sri Lanka Chapter, Professor S. Dikchit Sir, Director IQAC Nefesh. They warm welcome to all the participants, YouTube viewers, Today's special topic, uh, Life Lessons from Bertrand Meto Russell, a British mathematician, philosopher, and uh, a writer, really a wonderful person. He born on 18th May, 18, 19, 1872. Professor Chennai sir informed about Bertrand Russell so many times. We have habit on the same time, five o'clock after five, go walking almost uh, two to three kilometers from Sri Venkateshwara University to Vedic University, the same uh, spiritual city, temple city, Tirupati. The year 2019 uh, nine to 2011, almost and uh, 2011 to 13, almost five years. So the, journey whatever we have whenever we have time we always interact so this is a really wonderful and the same way we thought it is better to share the greatness of patron russell with our noble participants let's shravanam actually shravan listening is very very important that's why yesterday professor chennai sir said throughout a year almost more than one year we are organizing every day so the, because of this regular and uh, without any break we are preparing again and again so many things we can learn while listening while watching while doing while smelling tasting feeling touching so five cents six and seven cents also here how a mathematician all mathematic maximum mathematicians are philosophers even scientists, Einstein is also treated as a philosopher. So here, philosophy is the mother of all sciences, and the mathematics. Those who I am also from maths, physics, and chemistry. So the, in general, the mathematicians are mathem those people study mathematics. They have a logical and uh, arithmetic skills. So not only solving the numbers or problems in the daily life also will get innovative ideas to solve the problem. Whenever you have the combination of math and philosophy and the science, you will get uh, extraordinary. So whatever we have, it is our duty to apply in our daily life. So wherever you are living, the type of life you are uh, living or leading your life, it is better to take greatest life lessons, life-changing lessons from philosophers, scientists, mathematicians, 
and writers, great personality, even Professor Chennai sir rightly mentioned yesterday, positive psychology. There are so many innovative things without any border, region, religion, race, we can learn from anyone or any place. With this, I welcome one and all. As usual, we start our program with one day Mataram. A warm welcome to all the noble participants. Requesting Professor Chennai sir to deliver keynote address. Over to you, sir. Respectable uh, coordinator, Dr. Amareshwar, with the design of the program. So, who is actually organizing this program very nicely. And all the participants of the program. In the world, we have how great philosophers who have shown like human existence. In the world, we have so many types of problems, social, political, religious, educational, environmental, psychological, various types of problems. Here, human beings responsible all problems. Sometimes we make problems from nature. From we have Adhyatma Dukkha, Adi Dukkha, Adi Dukkha. So we get problems from other human beings. We get problems from various types of uh, dangerous uh, animals in the world. So. Sometimes we may get uh, problems from earthquakes, tsunami, so so many th things. For that, here philosophers have given many solutions how to live to very comfortable manner. What is our role here? So in this connection today, I share something about the great philosopher of the world, Bertrand Russell. So he born is like a fish in the ocean. Man flies just like a bird in the sky, but man is not going inwardly. He is not knowing about himself. That's why he is not happy. So a person who knows about himself, he knows the wisdom, the life and everything. So here Bertrand Russell is telling, what are the values, valuable things in the life? So he, is, he has demarcated. We are thinking that so we have many things here in the life. We have houses, lands, stock exchange shares, bonds, insurance, vehicles, real estate sites. These words are used by the Bertram Russell. These are not the most important thing in the life. 
so we have to take more care to live very comfortable manner to live with joyful manner here what is the important things in the life are friendship according to bertrand russell friendship is a very valuable thing in the world so for what do you mean by friendship friendship is the equality in the hearts of people if you have a faithful friend if you have a good friend if you have a lovely and happy joyful friend your life will be very pleasant so friendship is a beautiful thing in the life so according to bertrand russell friendship is a very valuable thing not uh, vehicles or property or money or bonds or anything they need to, many material things they are monetary things but they may be helpful they are not so much of important for the getting happiness in the life so he said trust so here faithfulness so if you have a friend or a any person who, if you have a more faith you may give more gold or any property or money or anything without any having doubt so uh, trustful relationship is a very essential relation very happy relation very powerful relation trust is a valuable thing uh, in our life relating with uh, many so here confidence here confidence relating with the people confidence relating with the skills confident relating with the knowledge many things confidence is very nearer to success confidence comes from various types of experiences related to the excellence confidence comes when you have extraordinary excellency extraordinary preparation uh, valuable things in the life he is telling empathy so what do you mean by empathy here empathy means the other person is the most important person in the life you have to give more importance so so if you think the other person is a very important then you don't find any problem so this is your objective understanding if you think the nature is a most important then you don't find any water air pollution or sound pollution or any types of pollutions in the life so here other person is a most important thing in the life so here if you want to promise anything if you have a sufficient uh, capacity to fulfill uh, the promise you have to tell if you have no capacity if you say something if you are not performed if you are not delivered uh, what you said then you may miss the confidence the trust the value if you give any issue or anything to other person that is the most important thing giving most important for other person the other person is a very valuable person so objective preparation is relating with empathy so here mercy so kindness kindness is a great value so if you give more kindness to animals or human beings or anybody if you share kindness you may get a positive re- relations you may get a peaceful environment so here bertrand russell is telling so love so he has given most importance uh, the values of life love is a great value in the human life so he has given most important he is telling we get blissful experience through love the sexual activity is different from love the ambition the greed the attachment the possessiveness the ownership the quarreling the misunderstanding the jealousy relating with the men and women these qualities are not relating with love 
love is a gentleness a tenderness a compassion it is just like a fragrance of a flower it is coming from the inner source it is just like a flower of a emptiness it is just like a music from the empty flute just like a music from a veena strings so here love comes from purity so he is telling love flourishes when there is a freedom when there is a spontaneous interaction you enjoy love when there is a spontaneity when there is a freedom you enjoy love that love is a very blissful love if you have love on the basis of duty that love will become very hurtful in the future so if you ask anybody according to bertrand russell you love me just as a duty that is a very burden thing that is a harmful thing you won't get any spontaneity if you ask somebody to love after some time they may hate because the love may be a temporary it may be just like a breeze just like a rainfall just like a fragrance it may live short time but it is a very beautiful very pleasant very joyful so love may not be a permanent but if you are expecting love for permanency you may face so many problems that's why here bertrand russell is telling if you include duty in the love that love will become very burdensome that love will become hatred jealousy so that love will disappear that's why don't expect anything be free so he is telling if you love life your life will be very beautiful if you have no love feeling in our life then your life is just like a desert a flower without any fragrance so here love is the most important thing so here bertrand russell is telling so here uh, my life is based on so many things he said i have great admiration and love knowledge at the same time the suffering of human existence so if you have a loveful intimate relationship joyful relationship with a blissful relationship with a love then your life will be very beautiful he is telling that if you want to get happiness in the life be free from ego if you think that i am a superior i am a great person i am a knowledgeable person i know many things if you have a more ego then you won't listen you want to free so here when you are free from ego when you are free from all types of images when you are have a fresh mind then you may enjoy life happiness and everything you may get more enjoyableness when you have freedom in the mind that is the most important thing in the life so here uh, bertrand russell is telling some psychological points almost all the human beings no exception man and woman all people expect admiration respect for their activities they want uh, appreciation they want thankfulness respect on the basis of their behavior and actions so here is telling if you are giving more admiration and respect in the human being life then you may be very blissful person very happy person so here he got a nobel prize uh, for uh, literature and uh, um, he opposed uh, um, the vietnam war and he opposed nuclear weapons so he said uh, to avoid world wars he said we have to do every day one hour for meditation according to bertrand russell the meditation is a watching of mind 
attention of mind process. If you observe the external world and the internal world, he said two angles relating with the meditation. While you are walking, while you are eating, while you are listening, while you are doing, whatever the thing you are doing in the external world, if you do with awareness, that awareness itself is a meditation. While you are driving, if you are very careful for your driving, your speed, your movements, your surroundings, then you may act very correctly. If you miss awareness relating with the external activities, then only you will face so many accidents and problems. So use awareness wherever you are in the external world. According to Bertrand Russell, he said, you have to purify every day your mind. Just like taking uh, fresh, um, clean clothes, just like uh, taking bath, just cleaning a mirror to see our face, you have to observe your thought process. While observing your thought process, don't say this is a good and this is a bad, this is a right and this is not. Don't have any prejudice. Don't have liking and disliking. Just like a mirror seeing, while you are uh, seeing your face in the mirror, you have to maintain some space between your mirror and yourself. Otherwise, if you are cling with uh, your face with uh, pivical gum to your mirror, you won't see your face in the mirror. In the same manner, you have a clouds, thoughts in your mind. They are floating just like a clouds in the sky, in the mind. You have to maintain some space. You have to observe the positive thoughts and negative thoughts, pleasant, pleasant experiences and unpleasant experiences. Observe with the maintenance of space. If you observe with a silent manner, after some time, the pleasant or unpleasant or any thoughts you observe will go to in a silent place in the brain cells. Your mind becomes very empty, just like a flute. You will get more creativity, more happiness, more bliss, more enjoyment from your mind. So the happiness or unhappiness in the state of mind, when you have a purity, when you have innocence, when you have no any thought process in your mind, you will get bliss and happiness. When you have more thoughts, more dangerous things in your mind, your mind itself is a source for hell and the problems. So the heaven and the have a hell are in the state of mind. If you have a pure mind, your life is just like a heaven. If you have an impure mind, just like a hell in your life. That's why watch your mind very carefully. Watching is a cleaning. Watching is a purgation. While you are watching, don't have any attachment. Don't say positive or negative. Clean observation is the most important. He, so Bertrand also said, so we have a, one, nearly 194 uh, sovereign states in the world. He said, people are uh, killing, dying for the country. People are uh, worshipping the territorial backgrounds. So entire world is a one. The politicians have divided countries in the world to avoid differences geographically, psychologically. The policy maker, the president, the prime minister, the kings, the monarchs, the policy makers have to done meditation one hour. If they done meditation one hour, they may get more cleanliness in their mind. They may start loving people. They may give more uh, friendliness to people. They won't take more actions uh, for uh, creating wars. So the wars are arising in the states of minds. We have to clean our mind. So meditation is the source for getting more happiness. So meditation removes the thoughts of wars in the state of mind. He said meditation should be there everywhere. So he worked as a professor of logic in the New York City College, in the London Trinity College. So he's a wonderful person. He said many things about the human existence. So he said, in the life, many people are not in a position to 
take more care relating with how to use life. So if they are not uh, using life very carefully, very pleasantly, then there is a danger for their existence. So using time is the most important thing. How to use uh, time? What is the important thing here? So here, Dr. Russell is selling. Um, so here, science is knowing knowledge. Philosophy is um, not knowing. So he is telling, if you get more knowledge, you may experiment, you may do many things. If you have a purity in our mind, you may see bliss. So the true philosophy comes from emptiness, purity of the mind. So on the basis of external world knowledge, you may experiment, you may observe many things. On the basis of experiments, you may invent and you may conclude, you may know many things. So here, for integration of life, you have to understand the knowledge relating with the external world. At the same time, you have to purify your mind to know your inner divinity. That is the most important thing in the life. So here, um, Bertrand Russell is telling that in the world, people are not using their time properly. So they have to take more plans to utilize their leisure time. If they are not using their time with the proper manner, they may spend their time for bad habits with the wrong activities, wrong life. So then you don't find more happiness. So if you want to get more happiness in the life, you have to use your time very carefully. Usage of time is the most important thing in the life. If you are not taking more care for usage of life, then there is a danger. So he said about religion. So my whole religion is this. Um, do every duty and expect no reward for it, either here and hereafter. So here, do your duty. Don't expect in this world and uh, um, in the next life also. If you expect anything, that is a danger for your life. So live your life without having any expectation. Expectation is a problem. So he is telling, you should live here in the world without having any fear. Fear is a very dangerous thing. If you have no fear, then your life will be very pleasant. So he's, he said about a good life. A good life is one which is getting inspiration from love and knowledge. So wherever you are, love should be there. Otherwise, there is a danger. So he said about the happy life. What do you mean by happy life? A life with contentment is a happy life. A life with uh, quietness, silence, pleasantness, blissfulness is a state of happy life. <coughs> so here, happiness comes from contentment. So here, he is telling freedom. Freedom from desire, expectation, violence, war, people. If you have a more attachment, the attachment creates more suffering to you. Don't have any attachment. Be free. When you are free, so he's telling in the human beings, they have money, positions, houses, vehicles, many, many properties. But they are there. They are useful for biological and psychological survival. But don't carry your possessions in the psychological sense. If you have always occupied with the properties and material things, you won't live happily here in the world. When you are free from all attachments, all possessive things, then your mind will be free. On the basis of free mind, you can live here in the world with happiness. So happiness comes from purity. So happiness comes from innocence. That is the most important thing in the life. So here we have to follow very carefully many things. 
so he said about the uh, capitalistic outlook so um, in the capitalistic outlook um, we find the uh, rich people may dominate the poor people they may expect more work they may expect more knowledge so here Bertrand Russell is telling one important uh, point relating with the social life when you are interesting with the many people when you are smiling with the many people when you are sharing good things to many people you may get more happiness to you that's why share goodness to many people then you may get more goodness from many people sharing and moving smiling these are most important things for a happy life otherwise your life will be unpleasant so here be careful remember humanity so love friendship cooperation understanding blissfulness friendliness so happy moving he is telling so we may experience smile a, a few seconds but that is a that is a ever memorable thing so your life may be very short here you have to live here with a uh, full love friendship creativity meditation so here bertrand russell is telling don't live in the sadness hatred angry and jealousy if you start your life with a poisonous feelings then your life will be unpleasant if you go with a purity and emptiness with a innocence with a detachment your life will be present your pleasant life will be a blissful life so if you live very pleasantly you may get more fulfillment and enjoyment in the life i concluded this speech amare sir thank you sir thank you very much Now I am requesting our participant <clears throat> to interact with Professor Chennai sir. Over to the participants. So, um, Amare sir, uh, um, Hema Gari is available. Yes sir, yes sir. Hema madam, Deepalata Gupta madam, all are available, sir. Yes, yes. Good evening. Very good evening to you, sir. To Amar, sir. Very ah, good okay. evening, sir. Uh, you have explained very well, very well, yes, sir. How we should be, uh, how our mind should be like a plain paper. When yes. the mind is plain and pure, automatically we'll have happiness. That is yes. what you have a very clear in our Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Lord Krishna yeah. in the Bhagavad Gita also says, when you are free from all these, uh, um, uh, what do you call, uh, um, uh, grudges and all, automatically happiness yeah. will be there with you always. That is what our Lord Sri Krishna has uh, advised, has given advice to all the uh, people, sir. Very nicely yes. explained, sir. Thank you so much. Empathy and all should automatically it should be a part of a, a human being's psychology. Sir, empathy should be there. Without empathy, uh, 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 which is um, most important thing in a human being's life, we can't uh, take care of the other person when we don't have empathy. Sir, we don't love any other person when we don't when we lack empathy. Sir, very nicely explained. Sir, thank you so much, sir, yeah. for enlightening us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for uh, sharing good things because here, so he said, uh, sir, the sir. philosopher said, live like a, uh, a music. So while you are listening a beautiful music, you want sir. to think about your past. You want to think about your future. You want to remember your past. You want to remember, uh, you want to think about the future. You may concentrate on the present. So here, here they are telling, so love is in the state of present creativity is in the state of present so living with the joyfulness do your work with the total enjoyment so here bertrand russell is telling so if you have a more if you have a more pleasure on your work you may get more perfection that's why love your work enjoy your work on the basis of love, you may get perfection, enjoyment, bliss and everything. Live like a 
divine melody so music coming from the flute from veena or uh, any musical instrument so here um, they are telling live like just like a listening of a beautiful music so that may give more importance so very nice uh, uh, hema garu for your uh, sharing and uh, telling something yes sir work is worship yes. sir when we love our work automatically uh, we will be very happy sir so here is it is true yes. it is true so sir. for that we need extraordinary discipline so if we work then you don't find any time we don't find a day or night you don't find any boredom you don't find any unemployment so here you see the great musicians of the world the great painters of the world the great sculptors of the world they have loved their work they have uh, lived their work so they don't bother about the remuneration the, the future and everything they enjoyed their work just like a divine music so they enjoyed life that's why so living at present loving at present loving our work that is the most important thing for a pleasant way of living thank you yes sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you welcome amare sir sir also. sir listening sir yes srinivasal reddy na any other so deep doctor deepalata gupta ji is available on the line yes sir yes sir yes sir madam is available sir madam gupta madam hello sir yes pavan sir uh, please welcome uh, pavan kumar ask the question uh, there is a scope for me to share sir hmm yes namaste chennai sir and sir sir ah uh, yes yes allow to allow to create our world allow how to loving hmm to create anything on the anything in the world now uh, so emotions to create yeah. anything anything our science our world sciences our world how can sir? so here so how to create love in the world that is the question i framed on the basis of your content so how to create love what is love what is not love so here love alone can solve many problems so when when you have a love you may give anything when you have a love in our heart and mind you want to think about your body or a mind or a property whatever you have you may give you may surrender so love creates surrender so you may not forget uh, you may uh, you may give anything so here we have uh two kinds of love in the world so here love based on attachment and desire so actually love comes from the purity of the soul love is just like a music from a musical instrument so it is not a desire or a attachment or a ownership or a jealousy if love is based on attachment and a desire love creates hell and a prison at modern times people have understood differently about the love so so they are uh, thinking uh, the attraction the emotion the atta- uh, the possessiveness so they want to possess they want to live with them so this is a pleasurable attached love it is okay when two people are agreed there is no problem they may live they may face problems 
but in the relationship also when you have a attachment when you have a more desires you want to live very comfortable manner so you have to maintain some space so another love a love without any attachment and a desire love is a uh, heaven and a bliss so here love has a two doors one one door for hell another for door for heaven one door for happiness another door for unhappiness one door for violence another door for peace so here in the modern time so people are using love for destructive purposes problematic purpose a few people wise people are using love with a detached sense with the maintenance of balance they are living but the beautiful uh, film actresses the great uh, uh, players the great uh, people they have a physical appearance with a great manner but they are not following the law of balance the more balance you are life gives more to you the less balance life gives less to you so always balance should be there so here so in the balance you should not exceed you should not create any deficiency you should maintain uh, the mean the balance the center in the relationship for that if you want to protect uh, love in the human relationship don't depend on anybody when there is a dependence there is no love when there is no love there is no happiness when there is no happiness there is no fragrance in the life that's why don't have any psychological dependence be self sufficient be careful while you are talking don't trespass uh, the boundaries of men and women you should maintain a uh, uh, boundary just like a pillars in a um, four pillar building so you have to maintain your uh, balance don't enter too much uh, trespassing to the women or women should not trespass to the men they have to respect each other they have to maintain balance they have to talk very good, good things if they maintain nicely they may get more love they may protect love that's why more intelligence is the most important that's why the mental maturity the awareness the understanding the psychological sense understanding these are most important things to spread more love in the world amreshwar sir 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 oh sir ah, ask me question that uh, difference between adi manava stone age stone age man then medieval and medieval kingdom you are, you are asking history uh, you are asking history don't ask history here so i said about the better and russell i said okay. the law you ask uh, any question relating with the subject so okay, okay sir okay sir that is a history that is a different matter i am able to answer but here i am ready to answer the and the most important thing you have to um, said love that's the most important first of all you have to subject you have to frame the question you have to connect your question with the present subject then it will be a beautiful things so in the two 360 angles i may answer for any question or anything that is a different but here i am concerned with answering the present subject and the linked aspects relating the subject so i have answered uh, love if you have any question relating with the bertrand russell philosophy at the central concept you ask direct question i may answer pavan okay. kumar okay sir okay sir that physiological physiological emotion hypnosis love what is, oh, is i i said i, I said, I, I said uh, very clearly i said i said very clearly because uh, the physiologically emotionally means that is a attachment that is a desire you have to follow very carefully what i say so here we have a two types of love one love is a attachment here this attachment is a physiological attachment and a psychological attachment if you have a more desires relating with your body or the uh, mind then it may be a problem that's why here if you want to protect love be careful don't have any attachment physiologically that is a emotional that is a sexual that is not relating with love if you mix love with a sexual or a physical that is a dangerous thing at present the human beings are mixing love with a physiological and emotional and sexual that's why they are facing so many problem here our point relating with the betron russell and the philosophical angle so he love should be free from all types of physiological 
emotional and it comes from the fragrance of the soul uh, it is comes from the purity of the mind so here one has to watch very carefully then one may get more love and affection amara sir sir pattern does the pattern does that uh, thought way that foreigners to maintain uh, lovely that uh, marriage them Suddenly, break down and even marriage to to call them. That is what love, sir. That foreigners, how many person or fifty percent uh, that uh, lovely that marriage is easy, eh? but uh, suddenly break down then uh, uh, multiple marriages to following that uh, foreign countries. That is what love. That even the place that, that love in the inner. Not only the foreign countries, everywhere it is there. Okay. It yes. is there in India. There, foreign countries are there throughout the there. But yes. uh, here, you know, the the marriage may be one system, but uh, uh, the protection of the marriage, the protection of the law, the protection of the relationship uh, depend upon various factors. I said previously, you have to follow very carefully. So you have to maintain aloneness. Don't depend on anything. So if you have married uh, a marriage, if you ill treat the woman, the woman will ill treat you. If you respect woman, the woman respect you. That's why balanced relation, respectable relationship, dignity of the man and woman. You have to follow very carefully the psychological principles of human being. Then you won't find any problem in the marriage or a love or a friendship or without marriage also you can live very happily if you have a mature. Mature uh, friend, mature person. If you have a, um, for example, you see the uh, the great existential philosophers, but uh, the Jean Paul Sartre have married. The, he got a Nobel Prize for uh, the book uh, Words in 1964. So he, he had a girlfriend in the uh, France. They have not married. They lived uh, uh, lifelong because. Here, uh, this is a legal system, marriage and everything. This is a legal boundary uh, to avoid various types of problems. We have a law, legal. This is essential for a social life. But so, for protection of uh, marriage or a protection of love or a good relationship, we need maturity. We have to follow the um, respectable rules of the men and women. Then we may protect. So, uh, in the foreign or a India or a Tirupati or a Rajamandri or a um, uh, Kashmir or anywhere uh, throughout the world, human beings have to follow the rules, psychological rules. These rules for uh, protection of marriage and love are balance. Respect, mutual understanding, maintenance of balance, self-sufficiency, good conversation, good mind, helping, sharing. Um. Uh, so this type of uh, positive things, we, if we have expressed, we may get a positive relation. We don't find any breakups in the marriage or the uh, love or anything. So these things we have to understand very carefully. Amar okay, sir. sir. Okay, sir. Very good explanation, sir. But uh, thank you. But sir, but now, but nowadays. Uh, all, all, all is okay. All is okay. But uh, some loves are see to enjoy. Some loves are want to. Uh... I, I have, this is a repetition. It is a it is a repetition of the question. I have answered very very well. So for all the questions, I have uh, answered very well. Your question is a repetition. So uh, if you have any direct question without a repetition, you ask me, I will answer. Which love is great, sir? Which love is great? That uh, self self-fully, uh, 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 physiologically. I will say. See, I will say it very carefully. Uh, then we will uh, move differently. So, a love without desire, without attachment is a beautiful love. A love with attachment and desire is based on uh, hell and destructive things. That's why desireless, attachment, attachment uh, free love is a super love that is the most essential for a happy life. Amrish, sir, you ask. Sir, Thank you, is, sir. Where is that love, sir? That love is very dear, sir. Our, uh, our earth land. Uh, Okay, sir. Okay, okay. So, I have, have answered. Yes, yes. Yeah, I have answered. Madam, madam, do you have any query? Sushila, madam. Srinivasan Reddy, na Durgesh Parma ji, Jibalata Devi ji, Venkatrao sir, Professor Venkatrao sir. Amre sir. Sir, sir. You ask one question, then I will close and you will start the program. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, you ask. 
when i am going through the writings and quotes of uh, veteran russell actually he has a different opinion on education sir so what is uh, exactly the opinion of veteran russell on education and uh, practice of way of life of people sir so he has a uh, um <clears throat> he has written book on the education and as a social order he has given the most importance for the life so here bertrand russell said so he worked as a um he has written one book called marriage and morals he worked as a professor in the trinity college in the london and the new york city college as a professor of logic so he has written one book uh, uh, that is called marriage and morals uh, this book ga got a nobel prize while he was a young stage while he was a teaching in the new york city college and the trinity college in the london people students got more enjoyable so in that book marriage and morals free from attachment good social actions lovely relationships beautiful interaction so many good things are there in that book so on the basis of that book on the basis of his uh, teachings the trinity college administration and the new york city college terminated his job as a professor in the new york city college and the trinity college so your uh, philosophy is creating so much of danger for us we are removing your job so after some time on the basis of uh, his lectures and the, the book he got a nobel prize so he said about the education this education is a awakening of intelligence education is a source for social order and the world order in the world we have various types of differences divisions attachments ownerships various types of problems for that you have to see very carefully um through great learning experience you may solve many problems he said education should be a lifelong one wherever you are whatever the thing you are doing you should have to learn you should have to uh, get more education so he is telling education is a is not a occasional affair if you start uh, learning occasionally you may not get more fresh education that's why he is telling don't have any deviations limitations relating with education so the entire human knowledge is relating with you you have to listen very carefully you have to see very carefully listening and seeing are most important to know many things with the original manner be a listener learn the law of silence when you are silent you may get more understanding about the human life while you are silent if you listen anything you may get more understanding while you are silent if you see anything you may get more perception so here seeing and listening are most important at the same time he is telling about the education he said about the um mind purification education psychological education so meditative education he has given so he said the wrong education has created so many problems in the world so wrong education means uh, a wrong conceptions so the the nationalistic outlooks so the the region the, the racism the imperialism the fascism the na nazism the dogmatism so he is telling for the education dogmatism is the great obstacle to know various types of educations in the world learning experiences what do you mean by dogmatism dogmatism is a stupid clinging to one particular thing one particular concept a person who has a dogmatic outlook he won't listen he won't see he won't learn anything he may think the supreme person that's why he so free from a rigid outlooks are most important for that you have to maintain a 
to maintain good learning experiences in their life. So he said, um, he said about the books. If you read any book, you may get two advantages. Are you listening, Amrish sir? Yes, sir. I'm listening, sir. So if you are, uh, uh, if you are uh, reading a book, you may get uh, uh, two advantages. You may get more knowledge. At the same time, you may appreciate the qualities of the book. If you start uh, uh, learning or uh, reading various types of books in the in the course of education, you can know many great things in the first. That's why he said education is essential for social change. Education is essential for transformation. So education creates good social life and the good excellency. He's telling we need two types of knowledge through education. One is a knowledge relating with the inner mind, at the same time, scientific mind. Be pure in our mind through education, through awareness. You have to learn external things. This scientific development, but he is talking about the education. The education should give guidance to you to avoid uh, hydrogen bombs, atom bombs. Don't use any chemical bombs or anything. Use your life for a peaceful way. Do all good things, then your life will be present. So he said, education is essential for human life, individual transformation, and the world transformation. It, uh, it may give great changes in the individual and the society. So uh, education should be based on social order and uh, uh, individual transformation. These things we find in the um, education of Vatanam Rassal Amrath, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your uh, outstanding keynote address on this special occasion. And the discussion may go for my presentation, sir, with your permission. Uh, please, please. Uh, Thank you, sir. Press, Thank you very much. So good evening to Professor Chennai sir, my so keynote speaker and uh, noble participants. F Life lessons from Betron Russell, the outline of the presentation, introduction, learning outcome, understand uh, life lessons from Betron Russell and the conclusion. So the learning outcome, understand life lessons from Betron Russell. Before going to our actual topic, uh, as usual, I want to share, uh, you will never give up in life. Actually, I am really inspired by observing my niece here, another nephew, one and a half year, almost uh, three and a half year, another nephew. The niece actually sees a trying again and again. Uh, she's trying to learn how to walk. Actually, I observed within uh, two, three minutes, more than 10 times is getting down and uh, standing up, really a surprise, not in a position to give up. A small baby is uh, not in a position to give up. What about uh, our teachers, scholars, we, what we will do? Suppose uh, our article is not uh, accepted in one journal or first time, we, in general, we disappoint. Uh, Am I, am I useless or what? Am I, am I not contributing? So negative thoughts always will give up, but it is not. Even when I got a UGC research award, All India level first rank, but they selected the second one. I filed more than 100 RTI and many oh, national organization, including Prime Minister of India during that time. But I learned many things while doing that one because of my RTIs, another uh, 17 people they got uh, justice but uh, really uh, this is also another type of the uh, courageous uh, thing within myself uh, to initiate the program with the help of professor chennai sir and dr sutasani gogoi madam here we can learn very nicely within a five to yes five minutes the video never give up gautama buddha motivational story Once upon a time, during times of Gautam Buddha, there was a king. He had many elephants. One of them was very powerful, obedient and skilled in fighting. 
he went with king in many wars and was king's favorite elephant as time passed the elephant got old and was unable to participate in wars king cared for him and would not take him to war anymore now elephant was retired one day elephant went to nearby pond to drink water suddenly his leg got stuck in the mud deep in the pond elephant tried a lot but could not get himself out of the pond at last he gave up and sat there when servants noticed that elephant was missing they started searching him here and there and soon they found him in the pond news of trapped elephant reached king many people gathered there along with king and many efforts were made to get elephant out of that muddy pond but all in vain they could not get elephant out of the pond even after many efforts now everyone started losing hope it happened that at that same time gautam buddha was passing by that place people went to him and asked for help gautam buddha inquired about the elephant and then reached the spot when king saw buddha coming he requested buddha and said oh lord please help me to rescue my elephant it is one of my favorite elephant who has won me many wars with his skill and bravery please do something i can't see a miserable end to his life after inspecting the spot buddha thought for a moment and then he said to king bring drums and trumpet of war drums of war and trumpet should be played around elephant king asked his servant to bring drums and trumpets and soon sound of drums and trumpets reverberated in the sky as soon as elephant heard the drums and trumpets of war there was a change in expression of elephant it ignited spark in the attitude of elephant he started trumpeting and roaring with enthusiasm as if he was going to participate in war he started trying to come out of the mud and in the next moment he was out of the muddy pond everyone present there was surprised to see that they asked buddha is this a miracle we tried so much but we still could not get him out but now elephant came out on his own how is this possible buddha said there was no shortage of physical ability in elephant we just needed to motivate him because elephant used to go to wars but now he was not able to go there anymore therefore he lost his desire and will using drums and trumpets helped him get his enthusiasm back and thus he was able to get out of the muddy pond by himself if we see in our life we will find that many times we stop thinking positively and lose enthusiasm and then we get stuck in the problems due to lack of will power and enthusiasm sometimes we succumb to the challenges in our life we need to remember the times of our life when we conquered adversity we need to take inspiration from those moments in the past and regain our enthusiasm and thus we can bring ourselves out of the troubles by regaining our enthusiasm and optimism therefore don't let despair overwhelm yourself and always keep a positive attitude this is words of wisdom inspirational stories thanks for watching thanks so it is always better never give up on the abilities you have but in general we are not in a position to utilize on it so we, that's why we need a short term goal long term goal every day moment to moment watch and without uh, attachment maybe a detachment professor chennai sir rightly mentioned how it is possible when you are thinking thinking thing it is possible only and everything is in the hands of god the spiritual the way we are thinking it better to change the process of thinking only not anything so on this special occasion so who is madhurga this is a wonderful i really like the speeches of swami mukundananda one of the best uh, motivational speakers i am uh, regularly watching his videos on the special occasion it is for you There is a beautiful story 
from the life of Jagat Guru Shankara Acharya, the savior of Hinduism, who traveled all around Bharatvarsh, re-establishing people's faith in the Vedas. However, when he was residing in Kashi with his disciples, an episode took place that made him change his philosophic stance. According to him, there was just one entity, Brahma. Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya Jeevo Brahmai Vanapara. There is one Brahma. The world is Mithya or non-existent. And according to him, the soul is Brahman. Now one day, he was walking with his disciples towards the Manikarnika Ghat and found that the path had been blocked by a lady who had the body of her dead husband in her lap. And she was wailing. My husband was so nice. Why did God take him? Shankaracharya stood there and said, Ma, please give way. He began screaming more loudly. Everybody else, their husband is alive. Why did it happen to me alone? Shankaracharya lifted his voice. Mother, we need to go and bathe. Please make way for us. She began screaming even more loudly. Finally, Shankaracharya became a little annoyed. And he said, Mother, what is the point in crying like this? Your husband is gone. He is not going to come back. All of a sudden, that woman turned around. She said, Acharya, why are you speaking to me? Speak to my husband. Tell him to get up. Clear the path. Make way for you. Shankaracharya said, Mother, in separation from your husband, have you lost your mind? That is a dead body. It has got no energy in it. How can it get up? That woman, she said, Acharya, according to your principle, your interpretation of the Vedas, Brahma is Shakti Rahit, Avyakta Shakti Rahit Brahma. Because if there is Shakti, then there is no longer one entity. So tell me, we know that Brahma has created the world. If Brahma has created this world without Shakti, this dead body should also be able to get up without Shakti. To prove your point, make it do so. Shankaracharya was astounded. Who is this lady who has punched a hole in my philosophy? He remembered the time when he had gone to debate with Ved Vyas. When he had reached Badrik Ashram, he went behind to Uttar Badri and went up the snow-clad path. Ved Vyas was residing up in the Himalayas. He descended. The two of them met in a cave where they sat down and did Shastra, scriptural debate. It continued for seven days and Ved Vyas, the writer of 18 Puranas, he was unable to defeat Shankaracharya. The debate extended for another seven days and he still could not defeat him. Then he was pleased and he blessed Shankaracharya. You are competent. Go and preach. You will be successful. Shankaracharya thought that Ved Vyas was unable to vanquish me in debate. Who is this lady who has found such a hole in my philosophy? So he blinked his eyes and when he opened them, the whole scene had changed. That lady was no longer there, nor was her husband. In their place was Mother Durga, sitting on a lion with her ten arms. Shankaracharya lay prostrate on the floor and offered his obeisance. 
and the stuti the praises that emanated from his mouth at that time in sophisticated sanskrit that is the anand lahiri two praises by shankaracharya of mother durga are very famous one is the even more famous sandarya lahiri and the other is the anand lahiri which he spoke at that time in which he said that god does create but he does it through his shakti the yoga maya power so you are the cause of srishti sthiti pralay you are the swarup shakti of bhagavan there are two learnings from this episode firstly people ask the question we understand bhagavan but who is the lady who sits by his side we understand ram but who is sita we understand krishna but who is radha narayan but who is lakshmi so she is not a lady in the sense we understand a lady to be in the world she is the embodied yoga maya divine power of the lord and shakti shaktiman are one just like fire is one with its heat and light similarly krishna and radha are one shiv and parvati are one narayan and lakshmi are one second point this material energy from which this world is made is governed by the yog maya shakti it is not non existent the world is temporary but it does exist it is a sat not mithya hence your body you will have to take care of it you will have to provide it the proteins vitamins minerals carbohydrates that it needs otherwise you will not even be able to go towards god shariram adyam khalu dharma sadhanam lord krishna told arjun if you wish to achieve success in yoga by stopping to eat or eating too much it will not be possible maintain the body this is the vehicle for doing dharma those spiritualists who say material science is useless they are incorrect it is necessary to keep the body just like spiritual science is necessary for purifying the mind utilize both these harmonize these to reach the goal of your life very nice really the inspirational video both the videos we learned many things in general we are not in a position to give importance for physical health or mental health it is important both the health are important physical health and mental health a sound mind in a sound body now the brief history of betron russell what professor chennai said and sent bertrand russell was a 20th century british mathematician logician philosopher and political activist amongst his incredible contributions he's notable for being one of the founders of analytic philosophy co-authoring principia mathematica an attempt at creating a logical basis for mathematics writing a history of western philosophy which covered briefly the history of philosophy from the pre-socratic era to the early 20th century and became a commercial success and being a profound social commentator and activist on matters such as war and freedom of expression Russell was born on May 18th, 1872 in Trellick, Monmouthshire, Wales. He was born to an influential liberal family of the British aristocracy, and to put emphasis on the aristocratic background, the Russell family had been prestigious since the rise of the Tudor dynasty back in the late 1400s. His parents were John Russell, a politician and writer whose father was asked twice by Queen Victoria to form a government, and Catherine Louisa Russell. 
who is a suffragist and early advocate for birth control in the United Kingdom. Russell was the youngest of three siblings, with his other two siblings being Frank and Rachel, Rachel being seven years older and Frank being four years older. Tragedy struck Russell at a very young age. His mother died of diphtheria in June of 1874, with Rachel following not too long after. And his father died of bronchitis in January of 1876, after suffering from a long bout of depression. With both of their parents passing, Russell and his brother went to live with their paternal grandparents. Their grandfather died in 1878, so their grandmother became the dominant family figure. Her name was Lady Frances Elliot, and she was a woman of Scottish Presbyterian background. She was highly religious and actually went through the effort of getting a court to set aside a provision from Catherine that required the children be raised as agnostic. Frank was very vocal about his opposition to this highly religious upbringing that would follow, but Russell kept these feelings to himself. Despite her religious views, Lady Frances held progressive views in other areas and influenced Russell's outlook on social justice and standing up for principle. His critical views on religion also began to form at age 15 when he began thinking about the validity of Christianity. He found it to be very unconvincing and ultimately came to the conclusion that there is no free will. At age 17, he came to the conclusion that there is no life after death, and by 18, he was a full-blown atheist. Based on the early tragedies in his life and bottling his feelings towards his grandmother's rule, Russell was very lonely in his adolescence and often thought of suicide. He mentions in his autobiography that mathematics basically saved his life. His desire to keep learning more kept him going. He was educated by a series of tutors, but it seems Frank had the biggest influence, introducing him to the works of Euclid at age 11, actually describing this as one of the great events of his life. In 1890, after winning a scholarship, Russell began studying mathematics and philosophy at Trinity College in Cambridge. He quickly stood out in his departments of study and eventually met George Edward Moore, an English philosopher who would later go on to become one of the founders of analytic philosophy alongside Russell, and Alfred North Whitehead, an English mathematician and philosopher who made great influence on Russell, going on to work with him on foundational logic. Russell ultimately graduated with honors in both mathematics and philosophy by 1894, earning a philosophy fellowship in 1895. He began developing a work of political philosophy a year later entitled German Social Democracy and taught on the subject matter at the London School of Economics. In 1897, Russell began an intensive study of foundational mathematics at Trinity, writing an essay on the Cayley-Klein metrics used for non-Euclidean geometry. It was titled, An Essay on the Foundations of Geometry. In 1900, Russell attended the first International Congress of Philosophy, where he met Giuseppe Piano, an Italian mathematician, notable for being one of the founders of mathematical logic and set theory, and his axiomatization of the natural numbers, and Alessandro Padoa, an Italian mathematician who was a contributor to the school of Piano. They provided Russell a copy of Piano's Formulario Mathematico, an early work on rigorous set theory. And after hearing Piano's arguments at the Congress, Russell read through the work and yielded Russell's paradox, which is stated as follows. Let a set R be defined as X, such that X does not belong to X. Right. So we can learn. Then. I'm sorry. So we can watch the video and autobiography is available in YouTube. So Bertrand Russell is a multi diversified personality and he has IQ almost 180. It's so really a highest among the 21st century. And he is already received Professor Chennai are mentioned the Nobel Prize, being a philosopher and a mathematician and a writer. So there are so many life lessons from uh, Bertrand Russell regarding philosophy, regarding happiness, regarding uh, way of life, regarding uh, uh, spiritual, any aspects. There are two motives for reading a book. One, that you enjoy it. The other, 
that you can boast about it. Stupidity and unconscious bias often do more damage than venality. Language serves not only to express thought, but to make possible thoughts which could not exist without it. Do not fear to be eccentric in opinion, for every opinion now accepted was once eccentric. Of all forms of caution, caution in love is perhaps the most fatal to true happiness. The fundamental cause of the trouble is that in the modern world, the stupid are cocksure, while the intelligent are full of doubt. To fear love is to fear life, and those who fear life are already three parts dead. I would never die for my beliefs because I might be wrong. In all affairs, it's a healthy thing now and then to hang a question mark on the things you have long taken for granted. One of the symptoms of an approaching nervous breakdown is the belief that one's work is terribly important. Fear is the main source of superstition and one of the main sources of cruelty. To conquer fear is the beginning of wisdom. It is easy to fall in love. The hard part is finding someone to catch you. It is the preoccupation with possessions more than anything else that prevents us from living freely and nobly. Collective fear stimulates herd instinct and tends to produce ferocity towards those who are not regarded as members of the herd. No one gossips about other people's secret virtues. It has been said that man is a rational animal. All my life, I have been searching for evidence which could support this. The secret of happiness is to face the fact that the world is horrible, horrible, horrible. The infliction of cruelty with a good conscience is a delight to moralists. That is why they invented hell. Neither a man, nor a crowd, nor a nation can be trusted to act humanely or to think sanely under the influence of a great fear. The whole problem with the world is that fools and fanatics are always so certain of themselves and wiser people so full of doubts. Everything is vague to a degree. You do not realize till you have tried to make it precise. The greatest challenge to any thinker is stating the problem in a way that will allow a solution. Anything you're good at contributes to happiness. To be without some of the things you want is an indispensable part of happiness. Science is what you know. Philosophy is what you don't know. Sin is geographical. What is wanted is not the will to believe, but the will to find out, which is the exact opposite. Remember your humanity and forget the rest. Dogmatism is the greatest of mental obstacles to human happiness. 
Man is a credulous animal and must believe something. In the absence of good grounds for belief, he will be satisfied with bad ones. Life is nothing but a competition to be the criminal rather than the victim. A happy life must be, to a great extent, a quiet life. For it is only in an atmosphere of quiet that true joy can live. Is there any knowledge in the world which is so certain that no reasonable man could doubt it? How much longer is the world willing to endure this spectacle of wanton cruelty? Nothing is so exhausting as indecision, and nothing is so futile. Patriotism is the willingness to kill and be killed for trivial reasons. Conquer the world by intelligence and not merely by being slavishly subdued by the terror that comes from it. Boredom is therefore a vital problem for the moralist, since at least half the sins of mankind are caused by the fear of it. It is a waste of energy to be angry with a man who behaves badly, just as it is to be angry with a car that won't go. A sense of duty is useful in work, but offensive in personal relations. People wish to be liked, not to be endured with patient resignation. Mathematics, rightly viewed, possesses not only truth, but supreme beauty. One of the most powerful of all our passions is the desire to be admired and respected. Whoever wishes to become a philosopher must learn not to be frightened by absurdities. To be able to fill leisure intelligently is the last product of civilization. And at present, very few people have reached this level. Science may set limits to knowledge, but should not set limits to imagination. Few people can be happy unless they hate some other person, nation, or creed. Even if all the experts agree, they may well be mistaken. No nation was ever so virtuous as each believes itself, and none was ever so wicked as each believes the other. The most savage controversies are those about matters to which there is no good evidence either way. Love is wise, hatred is foolish. Men are born ignorant, not stupid. They are made stupid by education. Most people would rather die than think, and many of them do. One must care about a world one will not see. The only thing that will help mankind is cooperation. Freedom of opinion can only exist when the government thinks itself secure. Philosophy from the earliest times has made greater claims and achieved fewer results than any other branch of learning. Never try to discourage thinking, for you are sure to succeed. Extreme hopes are born from extreme misery. The search for something permanent 
is one of the deepest of the instincts leading men to philosophy. We love our habits more than our income, often more than our life. The biggest loss in a person's life is the loss of time. The hardest thing in life is to know which bridge to cross and which to burn. A man is rational in proportion as his intelligence informs and controls his desires. He who does not like loneliness will never get freedom. A person can be called a fool if he does not change his mind. Belief in God and a future life makes it possible to go through life with less stoic courage than is needed by skeptics. The demand for certainty is one which is natural to man but is nevertheless an intellectual vice. The good life is one inspired by love and guided by knowledge. Very nice course. So love and knowledge are very, very essential. Even he has given a one, had given wonderful views, expression on love, knowledge because of his misery loss of his uh, mother father and grandfather the way of thinking if you go through the quotes of uh, ben ron russell maybe it's uh, sometimes it is uh, beyond our uh, imagination so according to him science maybe knowledge has its uh, limitations or limits but imagination doesn't so that is why he was recognized in the 21st century as a intelligent person of the 20th century because he lived in the 20th century recognized in the 21st century men are born ignorant not stupid they are made stupid by education by after reading this what only i asked professor chennai sir why he has uh, because the way during that time now you think uh, 100 years back uh, 1872 almost 150 years back you born and during that time, the slaverism, so many uh, the whole European countries are uh, dominated by wars and uh, superstition, so many other things. So the best life is uh, one in which the creative impulses play the largest part and the possessive impulses the smallest. So the cre that is the best life. The best life is always with the live love sorry, knowledge, the time you enjoy here, wasting is not wasted time. So whenever you have happiness, whatever you feel good or better. So fear is the main source of superstition. So that's why he is always conquer your uh, fear and one of the main source of cruelty. To conquer fear is the beginning of wisdom. So love of wisdom, that's why he liked the philosophy and the freedom of expression during that time, actually, the governments or rulers are not in a position to allow the wise persons are also to express their views, to understand the actual world as it is, not as we should wish it to be, is the beginning of wisdom. In general, what we try, things are, uh, there are two things, things are under your control, things not under your control. So we are always trying why this bus is like this, why these people are like this. It is not possible to change him or her or the things. It is better we can change the, our thinking process. That is why when you wisely, even after so many incidents uh, happened after UGC Research Award, Professor Chennai sir rightly guided uh, how to handle with smoothly if someone is a uh, writing negatively or speaking negatively also, how to respond, how to keep silent. The silence is very, very important. It is not possible to give answer to whatever the other peoples may feel or think or express. 
their opinion is not my opinion why to worry about their opinion it is not good so really the philosophical ways are very very essential war does not determine who is right only who is left now see almost 14 to 16 percent of uh, uh, ukraine land already declared by the putin of uh, the russian president it uh, may be under the control of russia now then almost uh, ukraine lost to get back the land so it is the war thousands of people you including children and ladies we lost uh, from ukraine side and soldiers and some civilians from uh, russia side also so this is really very nice for war does no not to determine who is right here only who is left so life is just one cup of coffee after another and don't look for anything else just we have in fact two kinds of morality side by side one which we preach but do not practice so it is not good and another which we practice but seldom preach that's why what uh, mahatma gandhi also meant the same thing always um, what you say or what you can do and what you can do and always better trikarana suddhi manasa vacha karmana we can say very nicely and we there are two motives for reading a book already this one that you enjoy it other the you can boast about it this quote really i learned very nice my whole religion is this do every duty and expect no reward for it even bhagavad gita also says the same thing hema madam while interacting with professor chennai sir so lord krishna also said just do your duty without it. actually our uh, vedas upanishads even mahabharata ramayana everything extraordinary knowledge the western philosophers western thinkers they expressed in a new way uh, so all the whole world recognized here either here or hereafter so religion is a way of life dr swatasni madam specialization is also philosophy of religion religion in its a way of life not just to pray someone or something it is always better the way of life it's easy to fall in love the hard part is finding someone to catch you this is very very wonderful we are faced with the paradoxical fact that education has become one of the chief obstacles to intelligence and freedom of thought so we are educating even uh, i really surprised one of last teachers asked me to file an rti on behalf of himself so i simply re rejected sorry sir you are a law teacher it is, you can do by yourself what you are going to teach your own students i can't do if uh, maybe a person can't do for himself i can help but for you it is not good whatever i file I always better to file on by myself on my own name i never uh, hesitate to disclose my name i have that much courage it is uh, because modern education is so seldom inspired by a great hope that it so seldom achieves great results so this is uh, actually the true expression or opinion of uh, Betron Russell on education. The secret to happiness is to face the fact that the old is horrible. Actually, after going through his uh, lessons and quotes, misery is the played a major role of his uh, thinking. That is why wherever he is expressing his opinions or his views are different than other philosophers. He may be a best person. who realized and tasted both pain and pleasure in his life the happiness is happiness that is genuinely satisfying is accompanied by the fullest exercise of our faculties and the fullest realization of the world in which we live 
actually here faculty means we can take as a census or some other things anything you are good at contributes to happiness this already in the video also anything you are good to at contributes to happiness so be good see good do good that is the way to god the key to happiness is accepting one unpleasant reality every day see all his quotes always misery and pleasant uh, that's why the unpleasant reality is a uh, life itself is a part of uh, both happiness and uh, un unpleasant things mathematics takes us into the region of absolute necessity to which not only the actual world but every possible world must conform that is why he, he likes and because of mathematics he changed his life itself and tried to change the lives of others one of the symptoms of an approaching nervous breakdown is the belief that one's work is terribly important so i'm, I'm going to show you the real uh, audio with the video of a uh, betron russell what uh, uh, his opinion for future generation and he these two videos within one or two minutes only this is the wisest man that's why i told his iq almost 180 one last question suppose lord russell this film were to be looked at by our descendants like a dead sea scroll in a thousand years time what would you think it's worth telling that generation about the life you've lived and the lessons you've learned from it? I should like to say two things. One intellectual and one moral. The intellectual thing I should want to say to them is this. When you are studying any matter or considering any philosophy, ask yourself only what are the facts and what is the truth that the facts bear out. Never let yourself be diverted either by what you would wish to believe or by what you think would have beneficent social effects if it were believed. But look only and solely at what are the facts. That is the intellectual thing that I should wish to say. The moral thing I should wish to say to them is very simple. I should say, love is wise, hatred is foolish. In this world, which is getting more and more closely interconnected, we have to learn to tolerate each other. We have to learn to put up with the fact that some people say things that we don't like. We can only live together in that way and if we are to live together and not die together we must learn a kind of charity and a kind of tolerance which is absolutely vital to the continuation of human life on this planet Very one nice last video. question actually see uh, he already a eyewitness for world war one world war two that's why they weigh their so living together, cooperation, love. So he, he doesn't like uh, hatred. In our uh, personal and professional life also, what we are doing, we almost uh, dislike others, hate others. So it is not good, if possible, better to like and love. That's why our 5Ls model of education also. This one is the last video from uh, Message to Future Generations. I gave in, in the almost uh, uh, 62 three years back one last question suppose lord russell this film were to be looked at by our descendants like a dead sea scroll in a thousand years time what would you think it's worth telling that generation about the life you've lived and the lessons you've learned from it i should like to say two things one intellectual and one moral the intellectual thing I should want to say to them is this. When you are studying any matter or considering any philosophy, ask yourself only 
what are the facts and what is the truth that the facts bear out. Never let yourself be diverted either by what you would wish to believe or by what you think could have beneficent social effects if it were believed. But look only and solely at what are the facts. That is the intellectual thing that I should wish to say. The moral thing I should wish to say to them is very simple. I should say, love is wise, hatred is foolish. In this world, which is getting more and more closely interconnected, we have to learn to tolerate each other. We have to learn to put up with the fact that some people say things that we don't like. We can only live together in that way. And if we are to live together and not die together, we must learn a kind of charity and a kind of tolerance, which is absolutely vital to the continuation of human life on this planet. So very nice. This thing, sir. Again, 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 I'm showing those who are newly joined participants. This is a model of well-being, positive emotions, relations, engagement, mindfulness, accomplishment, truthfulness, thoughtfulness, and open-minded. This is a Premato 7S model. Such select study, skillful store, share, and smart. Five wheels, like, love, learn, live, and live. And thank you very much. <laughs> We are on time. So now it's the time for uh, take feedback from Professor Chennai sir. Then we'll go for vote of thanks and national anthem. Then feedback. Over to Professor Chennai sir. Chennai sir. Okay, I think maybe a network issue. Thank you very much to Professor Chennai sir for an extraordinary keynote address and uh, interaction with the Nobel participants. Really, we are very happy to see and sir. Amre sir. Sir, 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 please sir. Uh, so have you announced the tomorrow's program? Yes, sir. Already I shared. I'm going to share, sir. Now, just after word of thanks. Okay. Amre, sir, and uh, congratulations for your nice presentation. And you have shown very beautiful films on Buddha. And uh, you have shown uh, wonderful audio uh, relating with Bertrand Russell. Very nice. Congratulations. You have taken more steps. Though you have many problems, but you have got more willpower and energy. Uh, so uh, very nice. Congratulations for our uh, nice work, Amre, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Actually, Prof thank you for reminding, sir, Professor Chennai, sir. Tomorrow we have again, same as usual, 5 to 7, our uh, 10th doctoral research conference. Already two paper presenters, one historian and another in literature uh, from English background, and myself, Professor Chennai, sir, on the special occasion of International Nonviolence Day on the was birth birthday of father of the nation mahatma gandhi so it is our uh, uh, duty to honor professor uh, mahatma gandhi mohandas karamchand gandhi so professor chennai sir uh, suggested to organize uh, so actually last year also we organized an international conference so this year it is better to already these two scholars are waiting uh, almost more than one month uh, so safir i think uh, you can uh, present your paper next month. I'm going to uh, put your name. Please share your uh, title and all those things. Thank you very much for uh, Professor Chennai sir for a uh, wonderful keynote address and uh, motivation of our participants to participate in the discussion. And uh, we really, we are grateful to Professor, Professor sir, Honorable White Chancellor. Thank you, Amra, sir. Most welcome. Thank you, Amra, sir. Honorable Vice Chancellor Nehu and Professor Rajaradisa, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Sri Venkateshwar University, Dr. 
Nagaraj Sri Madam, Dr. Vijay Baskar sir for uploading our flyers at Sri Venkateshwara University website. Professor Mithali Kovar ma'am, Dr. Rajendra Prasad Bhartapur sir, Dr. Sutosini Gagoy madam from Moran College, Dr. Professor Mipun sir, ISTD chairman, Professor Dikchit sir, IQAC <laughs> director Nehu Shillong. And uh, really, we are grateful to the participants, uh, Dr. Hamma, Madam Woodby, and uh, uh, Pawan Sir, and the other noble participants, those who uh, actually participated and uh, shared their views on this special occasion. Thank you very much, and see you tomorrow at uh, oh, 5 p.m. Now, National Anthem. Immediately, I can share the feedback form to get your certificates. Janagana mana adhinayaka jayahe Bharat bhagya vidhata Punjab Singh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Putkala Vanga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Uchala Jaladhitaranga Tava Shubha Nāme Jāge, Tava Shubha Āshish Māge, Gāhe Tava Jaya Gādhā. Jana Gana Mangala Dāyak Jaya He, Bhārat Bhāgya Vidhātā. Jaya He, Jaya He, Jaya He. Jai 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 thank you. Please submit your feedback form. And YouTube viewers also, please submit your feedback form and check your mail and see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. YouTube viewers, already I shared, please, you can submit your feedback form. <laughs>